a piece of Mauristica history lies in the dust on the shelf. And this is a travesty. Hey everyone, this is Megan. Bet you didn't think you'd see me again. I mean, Mauristica's only been quiet for, I don't know, 85 years. It's been 84 years. But uh, here I am. Glad to see you. Piece of Mauristica history lying on the shelf. That would be a reference to Keep Right, our very first project, a 12 episode audio series. And only seven ever got posted. Only seven. The other few never saw the light of day. This is a travesty and this summer we are here to correct it. So I hope you will keep watching and that's the, really the purpose of this video here is to just say, hey, we're back and watch for Keep Right. Also though, I have a list of a couple questions just so this video isn't just 30 seconds long and ultimately extremely boring. First question is, why wasn't Keep Right posted a long time ago? Reasons. Um, um, stuff. I think stuff. Stuff more than reasons, maybe. maybe, maybe some kind of combination of stuff. Factors. Factors definitely affected it. And just variables of life and universe. Yeah, the important thing is it's going up and I'm so happy about it. <laughs> Finally! Next question. What makes Keep Right unique as a project from a creator standpoint? I think just it was our first. We were mostly teenagers writing stories about teenagers, acting teenagers. We were young. We had almost no experience. We had slightly less money. And oh, oh, oh. You brought a piggy bank. And approximately the same amount of time and Brett was born. Personally, I find that kind of cool. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it has to be unique by definition. It's our first. Favorite part of directing, keep right. One to mention specifically was something I didn't see coming was just as an act, a director. It fascinated me at the end, after all 12 episodes, to have seen the character and actor progression. It was interesting for me to see the growth of the actors into their characters. I don't think they realized how awesome I thought that was, watching them go from episode 1 to episode 12 and just see that progression, it was awesome. And kind of working in harmony with the writing, where the writing also kind of adjusts a little bit, like, hey, this person's good at this, or this person's good at this. And just looking at it, oh, it was really cool. I'm nerding out, I'm sorry. I think also, it was, it was my first time directing, so it was very interesting for me to just observe how different actors reacted to different things, like how to get the idea across to an actor about the type of performance you're looking for. It's like different with, with, all, with all of them, and it's, it's just pretty cool to, to find that thing that like, oh, now they understand. I remember this one time where it was the actor and then a uh, stand-in, who was also an actor, but she was just filling in lines for a different part. I was having a hard time getting across to him what I wanted him to do. And eventually I was like, and I hadn't been correcting Heather, the stand-in at all, because I was like, she's just gonna be dubbed in. And eventually I was like, wait a minute, he's reacting. That's what actors are supposed to do, it is react, not just say things on cue, but react. So I actually directed Heather after that next take, and I was like, well, I'm kind of looking for this. And I didn't direct him at all. I don't know if he found that odd in hindsight, but I didn't say anything to him. I said something to her. And the next take, she did it differently, and he responded differently because the stimuli was different. And it was exactly what I wanted, just the next take. And I am sorry. Heather and Keegan that it took me so long to figure that out, but you know, it was kind of a cool little moment. That's supposed to be revelation, you know, mind blowing, whatever, you get it. Funny, interesting story. I have a tendency to call Brandy Doyle, the actress for Paprika, I call her Paprika. I've done it a lot, and sometimes without even realizing it. I guess, I don't know, it speaks well of her acting, I just so absorbed. I can get soaked up in, into the story. I remember one time even with an actor, uh, without meaning to, I was speaking about his character, but I said you instead of he. That was probably really confusing at first. So I just realized I made myself sound like a really weird person. I don't drink coffee. Yeah, one more question. Give two reasons for people to listen to Keep Right. Maybe you might actually like it. Second reason, because you're a good person. Um, I'm pretty sure that stats, I think I've seen a stat once. Good people listen to Keep Right. I'm pretty sure that that's true. Good people listen to Keep Right, and you're a good person, so listen to Keep Right. And that's the last question on my list. Full disclosure, I wrote this list myself. Oh, Honestly, it's uh, it's great to be back. 
and uh, to get this stuff posted this summer. We plan to be posting occasional skits, um, behind the scenes stuff, but also we're looking at a new project. A couple of us have written a story that we're looking at maybe developing into a Moostika Studios production. We'll see how that goes. It's just fun to get my fingers into the creative stuff again. So glad to see you. Hope you join us on this journey. See you around the mulberry tree. Don't ask me where that came from. History lies in the dust. <laughs> Muristic history, a piece of it. I think that that's what I was supposed to say.